Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. In this video, I'll be taking you through the masking and the paintwork on this Volkswagen Golf. Painted in shark blue is the colour name and the paint code is 5R. So, we'll also be doing redoing the stone chip or the stone guard on the uh, sill panel down the bottom there. Something that uh, we don't usually do on every job, so I'll take you through exactly how I do that. It's something a bit different. So hang around and check that out. Uh, so when I'm masking it up, we're going off these uh, off these body lines there because we're not taking the front door off. So I decided that uh, we just had to mask off that line there. And to do that, I'm leaving it a couple of mil off the edge. And then I'm going to go over the top of that edge with some false edge masking with some uh, three quarter inch tape and fold the edge over, which I'll take you through in a minute. So here, uh, the inner trims for the body were, uh, inner trims for the car were a little bit too close, so I have to actually mask just in off that edge as well. I uh, just got to make sure it's all correctly sanded in there, otherwise if it's not, then you can go and unmask it and you can uh, peel your paint back up. So I'd already gone around and done the edge masking on this car, and once I was halfway through masking it, I thought, hey, I may as well include some footage of the masking fears on this job too. It's a pretty nice car. And you can see that's where the damage was down there on the sill. And we also put a new door, brand new door shell on the rear there. So we're swinging this door. It's going to have to be swinging when we're painting it. It's a bit of a knack to doing this kind of masking. When I was an apprentice and just becoming a tradesman, this kind of stuff used to uh, boggle me a little bit, I guess you could say. Uh, and then I just found once you just got to get in there and just start start masking it. It generally falls into place. So um, yeah, you can get the hang of it quite easy if you follow these steps. I actually love masking. It's um it's a good job. You, uh, and me and the other guy that I work with, we both love masking. It's uh, it's clean. It's e it's easy once you've got the hang of it. It can it can be something that's tricky uh, once you're starting out. You can just make a mess. Like a job like this probably took me about twenty five minutes to mask up, and uh, I just enjoy it. You can open the booth up, listen to the radio, and yeah, I just find it a nice job. So just going around, masking off that sealer edge there. So as uh, the sealer edge is a natural edge on the shape of the body anyway, so we're not going to get a big paint edge there. And just keeping it nice and tight here is important because when you go, because we're swinging the door, when you go to close it, you don't want it all flapping around and touching the, uh, possibly touching the inside in a jam there. So just making sure there's no little areas where the overspray can come into the inside body of the car and just shutting that door making sure I'm happy with how it's shutting it turns out a bit of that tape down the bottom there is peeling up onto the exterior panel so poking that in and cutting it off with the razor blade there next up whack the gloves on and doing some wax and grease remover I've got a wipe on and a wipe off rag using these degreasing cloths. They're a Devilbus brand actually. They're called, uh, I think they're called D Wipeouts or something like that. And uh, they're just um, lint free cloths and they're sterile too so they don't hold any contaminants on them. You can just use just normal rags but sometimes the, the dyes and stuff like that in the uh, rags can run if you're not using bleached or white rags. And so I, I included this part here. See that sill panel? Now, the panel beater gave it to me, and it was a little bit wobbly. Now, I had to put that filler in there myself. And most panel beaters, they don't fill it up, so it's nice and uh, even there. It's actually up to me to make sure that that's right, because I want that stone guard to look really nice. So that's why I filled, put some fine filler over there. And um, we're going to be using the water-based stone guard over the top of that. We, there's no need to prime it because the water-based stone guard is so thick and it, it shoots out. It's just like putting primer over it anyway. So, um, yeah, it came out quite nice, this. Uh, we've got a big, uh, uh, nice body sh shoots gun there that we use for it. And uh, obviously, because it's water-based, it, the clean-up on it is just uh, water. Rinse the water through it pretty important that you clean these guns out properly most people don't to be honest and it's one of those things that just you go through them they just stop spraying because people don't clean them out properly and it honestly isn't hard to clean out so 
gets a bit annoying sometimes when you get into stone guard and someone hasn't cleaned it out and it's all clogged up. So you just spray it on nice and thick. You probably want to give it at least 20 minutes, uh, depending on the temperature obviously. You don't want to put it on too thick or else it'll just uh, take forever to dry. Um, just blending that edge out there too and unmasking it straight away to make sure that we're not going to get a big thick edge there. You just want to make sure you pull it back towards the uh, towards the area that you've stone guarded, not away from it. If you pull it away from it, it, it can peel back onto the part that you don't want stone guarded. So that not, edge is nice, and the finish on the stone guard itself is really nice, nice and thick there, and it uh, replicates the um, the rest of it. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'll uh, go around and put this uh, false edge masking on. Just flip, flip that leading edge over, over the, over your knee, and then just put it right up on the edge there. I've actually got another video dedicated just to show you guys a bit more in detail of how I do that false edge. So check through my other vids. I've got loads of other vids, and hit that subscribe button too if you haven't already. Keep up to date with my latest. I've got. Loads of good uh, ideas for new movies or new videos coming up and I'm open to suggestions for uh, anything that you think I can do to improve my videos, anything that you like, dislike, you're more than welcome to shoot them in the comments box below. Check me out on Facebook too. I post and link all my videos to my Facebook page. So next up, uh, we're just uh, wiping over the entire job with the tack cloth and the high pressure there. Uh, it turns out that I did this uh, step, I did this step about three times. I like to take across the entire thing about three times. So go around the entire job and then come back, do it again, come back, do it again. So it's your last step before painting. So it's uh, the key, I was always taught when I was an apprentice, the key to getting a clean job and a job without dust is it's all in the tack rag. You can speed up all the other steps, but once you get in there and you, you uh, tack rag and you want to slow down, and uh, make sure you wipe over it really nicely and you can get really nice clean jobs if you use the tack rag properly so that's our first coat you can see it's covering up pretty well uh, pretty quickly just the first coat just putting one quick coat over there there was one stain chip on that front door so I, was, uh, I filled that up and uh, here we go with that brand new door I cut the footage out of uh, all of the inside of the door on this job because uh, the, the video did start getting a bit longer than I usually make them. Just our first coat, getting it on nice and wet because we want to start getting some coverage up over that primed area. It's one of those cars you could um, you could just about uh, use a ground coat if you wanted to. Uh, it's, it's not the best coverage. Uh, if you want, if you wanted to save a little bit on paint, you could get some um, uh, wet on wet primer and put that over it or. Just a ground colour that's similar uh, colour. So we've given that just a couple of minutes because I'm using Standox solvent base in this job. Just about two minutes in between coats. It, it doesn't take too long. Um, as it starts warming up, I barely even have to stop when I'm painting. I can just uh, go in there and by the time I've uh, put the coat on to the next part, I can come back around to the start and it's right to go on. So. This solvent base really does dry nice and quick. Uh, the only downside is you've got to put an extra coat on because it doesn't uh, cover as well as the water-based paint. We're a little bit behind uh, Europe and stuff like that here in Australia. Uh, they're all gone water-based already and I know America is partly water-based. Some of the states are but not all are. Um, but Australia, it's not legislation at all yet that, that we have to use water-based paint. So that's our second coat there and we should basically have coverage after that. We're still going to do a tech coat over the top of that. Loads of different names for that tech coat, technique coat, drop coat, call it what you will, but uh, basically just um, I like to get the pressure up nice and high, about two bar, and uh, that way the effect in the metallic is going to look nice. Some people drop the pressure down uh, and hold the gun right back, but I like to uh, get the pressure up a bit more. Um, I've found there's less chance of getting model and getting the get it patched out if 
if you do drop drop the pressure down and go too far back. So as you can see, my methods are uh, they do work. So uh, I can't see any reason why if you guys don't follow these methods, then you won't get the same results. So you saw me with that uh, orange gun or the gold colored gun just then. That that was uh, blending clear. It's uh, all it is is just a transparent base coat, just clear base coat, and it allows our uh, last coat of metallic to uh, land in it nicely and you're not going to see the ring around where your, your uh, colour stops. So just giving it a bit of a nice blend out over those areas too, just a dust of colour over some of those blend areas. Um, as you can see there's full colour on the repaired section and up where the uh, door's going to be meeting up around that quarter panel but there's no, um, there's no colour at all near where the bumper bar goes and up where it's going to meet up to the tower gate and the turret or the roof. So apologies about the mangroves there, I was actually a little bit sick at this time. So struggling through the day, can't take time off though, work never stops. There's just my last coat. You can see um, I'm keeping a similar distance whereas some people do, they hold the gun right back and drop the pressure right down whereas I do the opposite. Well, I just keep it, well, I keep it the same distance, but uh, I actually up the pressure a bit myself because a couple of times I dropped it down and the metallic just didn't look right, it just didn't sit nice and yeah, it might it might vary if you're using different uh, kinds of paint and stuff like that. But anyway, we're on to our clear coat now. Um, this is the Dezilbert's GTI Pro Lite and I'm using the TE20 air cap on it, which is a bit of a favourite of mine. I find it an extremely easy gun to use. Um, I recommend this gun to a lot of people uh, starting off in the trade. Uh, I get a lot of people ask me what gun they should use and I just say well you shouldn't really go past the uh, Developers GDI Pro Lite with the TE20 cap because it, it really is just easy to use. Um, it's, they're well priced as well. Um, they're cheaper than the, most of the other guns on the market. Uh, well, I mean, the half-decent guns on the market, you can obviously go and get yourself a $100 spray gun, but it's going to spray like a $100 spray gun, pretty much. So, uh, The other air cap I've got on this gun is the TE-10, and I'll be doing a couple of reviews and demos on the TE-10s, uh, which is a good cap for some DIYers, if, uh, if it doesn't take quite as much air. Uh, it's got smaller holes in it than what the TE-20 does, so... Um, if, you, if you're doing jobs at home with uh, limited air pressure, then um, maybe the TE-10 would be the one that I would recommend for this gun. And this first coat, uh, you notice on that front door there, I didn't actually come right up to the uh, uh, front edge of the door with that first coat of clear. Um, and same with the blending clear. Um, I just uh, keep it right off as to colours like this, sometimes you can... Um, end up uh, putting too much clear there and it can darken that colour. Um, you'll see the car when it's out, uh, when it's in the wash bay, I've got a footage, some footage of it at the end. And even just with that one coat of clear, it did change it just slightly, you know. Um, look, refinishing, we do our best to re restore the cars to original condition, but um, yeah, there's always going to be slight colour differences and, you know, slight imperfections in it. Um, when these cars are built in the factories and stuff like that, they've got big uh, lockdown areas where there's no dust can get in. And uh, well, the thing about refinishing in these factories is that we've got to do all the sanding in the same workshop we're doing the painting. So we, we do our best to eliminate the dust out of the spray booth with the filters and the tack ragging and the prep, prep work. But there's always going to be a couple of uh, imperfections. But um, yeah, we do our best. And uh, the way one of my mates used to say it is he goes, well, if they wanted their car to be perfect, they shouldn't have crashed it in the first place. So, yeah. Obviously, it's not the way everyone, uh, we, it's not the way we operate. We don't go around with that kind of an attitude. We obviously always try to do the best that we can. I had one guy sending me a message through Facebook wanting me to help him uh, create a list of possible things that a, a workshop could do wrong trying to write up a contract and uh, bind a workshop to this contract and I said mate I'm not going to help you do that. 
I don't believe in stuff like that. I'm on the body shop side. They're, they're there to make a dollar at the end of the day. So it can be hard to make a dollar in this trade, which is why a lot of the body shops are closing down and it's turning into big business, which I don't like. I'd rather the workshops be run by spray painters and panel beaters that get to the age of 30 or 40 and after saving their ass off, they can um, buy a business and it's turning away from that. So I think knowledge is power and the more that we as the painters know, uh, the better position we're in. So there you go, that's my little rant anyway. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Tell me what you think. And what we're doing here is just the, uh, a bit of blending thinner. I've got it in that minigun of mine. Uh, that minigun, all that, that ever goes in there is just a blending thinner. I'm pulling that masking up, just a splash of that thinner over the edge. It's going to help my paint edge melt in a bit. Uh, pressure settings on this gun, um, about 25 psi, and this thing just hums along. It's like it really is a really easy gun, and it pump. It can pump if you want. You can really get a nice finish with this. Like gets a hell of a lot of paint on, but if you want to back it off a bit. You can wind that fluid in, get a bit more control over it, slow it down a touch. But it's uh, it's a very good versatile gun, which is why I use it every day and recommend it too. They also come in loads of different uh, graphics and stuff like that in here in Australia and the UK as well. I think the US version, which is the called the Tenk, I think they just come in like just some couple of plain different uh, colours. So a couple of the American guys that would really like to get their hands on some of the designs that we've got over here. I think if you look on eBay you might pay a little bit of um, shipping but I think you should actually be able to get them too if you are an American. Check me out on Facebook, I always post the pics of the latest um, latest designs that are coming out too. So you can see the job's quite nice, there's not much dust in it, it's pretty good. As I said, you know, we can never really eliminate 100% of the dust. I mean, I can probably camp a couple of handfuls of time when, when you've got a panel that doesn't have one piece in it. It's, we do our best, but sometimes you can't stop it completely. You can see that stone guard came out well too. This is the car when it's all done. It went a touch darker on that fender to the door, but it's definitely a sellable product right there. So check out these couple of links at the end if you haven't already seen them. Thanks again for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.